Good morning. Please stand for our call to worship and welcome to Franchise Missionary Baptist Church. Altogether reading, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Psalms 96, 8 through 9. Please bow your heads. Dear Jesus, you are the author, you are the perfecter of our faith. You save us, you sustain us, help us to trust in you as we worship together today. Lord, bring your Holy Spirit into this place. Remove anything that will block us from receiving the word. Give our pastor a word. Lord, and as, as we worship, let us lay our, our problems at the altar, at, with you, Lord. All blessings come through you. Lord, you have told us in your word that you hear our prayers. We are crying out to you. We are humbling ourselves before you and seeking your face. We come together as a church body to seek you. We repent and we turn from our wicked ways. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' holy, mighty name we pray, amen. amen. Our missionary pledge of the Franchise Missionary Baptist Church. All together, we believe it is the duty of every Christian man and woman to seek to win the lost to Christ. I pledge to do what I can, when I can, where I can, to win souls for Christ. I will not let the devil ever tell me again that mission work is only for women, that only men can preach. Every saved soul must help to save a soul. From this day forward, I will take Matthew 28, 19 and 20 everywhere I go, so help me God. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always even until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Our morning hymn, singing together, Holy, Holy, Holy.
please remain standing for our deacon ministry will come with scripture, hymn, and prayer. Good morning. This morning our scripture will be coming from Revelation chapter 22 starting at verse 16. And it reads, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit that the bride say, come, and let him that hears say, come, and let him that is thirst come. And whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to every man that hears the word of the prophet of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away the word of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away the part of the book of life. And out of the holy silver and from the things that are written in this book, he would testify things said, Surely I come quickly. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be, be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. How y'all doing? God is good. I say God is good. A lot of our moments will roll on a little while longer, but yet and still somebody was too mean to even look up while it was raining and tell them thank you. If you really know that God's been good to you, y'all just wave your hand and give him a good hand clap of praise. He's worthy to be praised. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but we need to hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. He said, I may not come when you want me, but I'm going to be on time. Hold on. And if y'all don't mind, I want y'all to help me sing this song. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Whoa, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to his hand. Yeah. God. If it can be your hope, don't they eternal? You dare hold to God's unchanging hand. Let me say that again. Ooh, you need to hold to His hand. God's unchanging hand Oh, hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Then you can be your hope Don't thank you, God Oh, His fear will transition. Ah, now, on earth, and who can stand? You need to be your hope on the eternal, eternal. Ooh, oh, God, 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 
put your hand together. Oh, I would not, I would not be a sinner. <laughs> I tell you the reason, the reason why. I'm afraid, my love, he just might call, call my name. I would, would be ready to die. Oh, we need to hold to his hand. My God, son. Oh, 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 to his hand. God, son, change. Then you can't be your don't think eternal. Oh, 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 to God's change. I got one more. You know what? I like that. Trust in him, he will not leave you. Ah, none so ever the queen may do. If your every free from sake you steer. Still more closely to his plan. Oh, you need to hold to his hand. God's intention. Oh, to his hand. God's intention. Be. Oh, thank you, Oh, to God. I got to say it one more time. Oh, trust in Him. He will not leave you. That's the wall. Ah, none.
noonday hour. Oh, Lord. You can call him oh, Lord. in the evening time. Oh, Lord. He just a, oh, Lord. He just a, oh, Lord. He just a, oh, Lord. a prayer away. Oh, Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Then you can be. of this world. He haven't given the deeds to nobody. And you ought to be, you ought to be happy. That franchise Baptist church started down on the riverbank in a bush arm. And the reason they moved up here so the people, the ship was coming in down there. I got this from what Miss Katie Whitehead, Joe. She's going to be with the Lord. And they 
they were keeping up so much fuss down there. And the ship coming in, we told them to move. They gave them this piece of land where the old building is. And told them, this is you all franchise. That's where we started from. They came there and built the shack. But they still were shout. See, franchise is not one of those churches where you look wise and otherwise. Franchise is a church where they praise God. And after a while, they fixed that one. And after a while, they fixed that one like it is. And then when we, when I came here 53 years ago, we built, fixed that building again. We outgrew it, and here we are here. God has done great things for us. I got something to rejoice. You have something to rejoice. Blessed it is when men shall revile you and shall persecute you and shall say all manners of evil against you falsely. Is that what Jesus said? Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. You black like I am. You have been talked about by other folk. Come on, y'all. He said a blessing. Because your joy come now. Your ch- heaven going to start with me here now. It'll start with you if you let it. Well, I want to preach a little while. And I have a, a, a second message for you. Uh, you can look at Proverbs 20, chapter, verses 3 and 10, and I'm going to read those verses, and then we'll homiletically discuss them. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be a melting. I'm reading from the King James Version. The slugger will not plow by the reason of the coal. Therefore shall he beg in the harvest and have nothing. Counselor is, uh, counselor in the heart of man is like deep waters. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will be proclaimed, even one, every one of his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. A king that sitteth in the thorn of judgment scatters away all evil with his eye. And I'm reading one or two over there. Who can say I have made my heart clear? I am pure for my sin. Rachel verse 9. But I want to talk about the men day, Father's Day. It's part two of 2021. Our culture is spiritual and morally troubled. Everywhere you look around, it's trouble. Every home. Shooting has become the order of the day. I was listening at the news when I was writing this, and the Holy Spirit leads me to write where I won't forget what I need to say. I never thought children four years old could be shot. I see a young man with children, beautiful children. They don't deserve to be shot. You ain't saying nothing, but I'm going to say something. I'm going to say what it is they don't deserve. People don't need their house to be shot in when you aren't bothering anybody. That's going on now. Shooting in the house. And the gun is not the problem. The idiot that get his hand on the gun. That gun won't do nothing. I've been 
I was red with guns, Sister Roselle. We came out of Luke, Lee County, and I had to have a, we had to have guns to kill rabbits and squirrels. That gun won't do no more than you let it do. Let's tell it like it is now. I, I'm, I, look, I ain't trying to butt it with nobody. I'm going to tell the truth. The gun is not bad. It's the person that gets his hand on the gun. And that gun control ain't worth a quarter they're working on now. Something got to happen to the folk get their hands on it. Come on, help me preach, y'all. God has given children something, someone whose power and prestige is greater than all the influence of society put together. One person more than any other can make a difference in a young person's life. He or her father. This is Father's Day. The important of a godly father can't be overstated. Well, how do we become warm and attractive fathers? How can we improve our fathering skill, our fathering skill? In our take, we find five facts for a good father. And I'm going to get them as quick as possible. But I want you to get the message in which the Lord is sending. A good father must be, number one, a patient man. I didn't say a patient woman. A father can't be no woman. And you go tell them folk, I said it. I'm big enough and old enough to say it. You, uh, two women call themselves married. Something wrong with that, according to this Bible. And more you call and tell me not to say it, gone, that's what I'm doing now, preaching. Talking about you going and preach. I ain't going to let nothing alone that the Holy Ghost tell me to say. Don't like my pictures? Don't shake my tree. Two women don't belong together. God, come on, help me, y'all. Two men don't belong together. And you can call, tell your telephone ring out. I'm still going to say that. And that's one thing America did wrong. You don't agree with nothing wrong. America is a God-sent, uh, God-fearing country. Those founding fathers believed in God. And we have gotten away. Thing that ought not to be you making it clear to satisfy the folk. I'll never, I'll never turn from my God to tell you it's all right to do wrong. Come on, y'all. It's not all right to do wrong. This Bible don't change and I'm not going to change. Seventy years almost a pastor and I'm going to hold to God. That, thank you, Brother Hugh. I'm going to hold to God unchanging hand. When something wrong, it's that wrong too. Yeah, I meant that. That outline a patient man, Proverbs 23. It is an honor for a man to see from strife, but every fool will be a melon. You know what a melon is? In somebody else's business. It takes, I, I heard my daddy said it took six months to mind his business, six months to leave yours alone. But it takes 12 months for me to mind mine. A wise father must be patient. It is an honor for a man to remain far from strife. Don't let things make you angry. But every fool show, show his teeth. Haven't you ever seen a, 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 a foolish person, as soon as somebody says something, want to fight? Have you ever seen, a, been around a, a bad dog? When you see him, he growl and show his teeth. You know what he's telling you? I got some in my mouth for you. And we were going for, we used to go going from house to house, Brother Clark. You remember communing, the late Deacon Perry. We were at a house and a great big old uh, German shepherd dog was on the step. And the dog growled. And the little boy said, come on in. He ain't going to bother you. Deacon Perry said, well, the dog hadn't told us that. 
He, <laughs> that dog has some big teeth. And he, I looked up and he said, I've been going up steps, bro, Pastor. No, Pastor. That bugger has come get this dog off of me. Step. That dog can say, he said, if you come up them steps, I'm going to reach through there and get one of y'all. That's, we, he, he couldn't talk, but we saw his action. Your action, sometimes, most times, speak louder than words. You meet a man, uh, and uh, how you, good morning, what's good about it? You don't need to be like that. You ought to have patience. Smile when you're happy. Smile when you're sad. Smile in the world of smile. By Ephesians 6 and 4. And you father, listen. And, and when you act that way, you can't rate. I, I read children. And I studied. And I want to tell you. Everybody can't raise children. Now you, can't, you can't raise. And thank God. I'm a father of a bunch of girls and two boys. Ephesians 64, and you father provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admiration of the Lord. Children got as much sense as you got. They know when you write, they know when you mean business. And they know when you're doing your best and they know children know more than you think. You've been a child, have you? Now, you can't fool children. Well, mom and them couldn't fool us. But children want to talk. Well, let me go on. Let me go on. I bet you, 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 you have to not provoke them to wrath. And one thing you can do, and it would get me, Don't bother my mama. I thought I'd be take my time to tell her, look, your wife is those children mama. Lucille in her grave, that's my mama. Mama lived a hundred over a hundred years old. I nursed my mama till I was a big boy. And I'd go up there and just get on in mama's bed and take a nap. Now, I love people, I love my family, but I love my mama. And if somebody said something to mama that I didn't like, and I go find that person, you, you have to be careful how you treat folks' mother. Somebody ought to say amen. You, you need, if you don't say amen, I know I'm preaching. It happens. A man can't raise no grown good. You, you, you can't talk about I whoop her in line. No, you ain't. Every lick one lady said, every lick he hit me, I love more. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh -uh. No, you don't do that. Don't do that. Listen, Proverbs 15, 1. A soft answer turn away. Rap. But grievous words stir up anger. Talk nice to fool. Proverbs 29, 11, a fool utter all his mind. You can't tell him, especially on your job, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. No, you better not. You ought to give him a piece of your work. I'm going to say, well, no, you ain't either. No, sir. You, you better hear me. But a wise man keep it in till afterward. My, my. Make up your mind. No, I don't want to go there yet. Number one, he patient. Uh, you do that sometime. I've turned two leaves here. Number two, a good father must not only be patient, but a hard worker. This number, let, let's read the verse. The sluggard will not plow by reason of cold. It's too cold out there. Therefore shall he beg in the harvest and have nothing. A good father is not lazy nor a sluggard. 
one of the causes of maladjusted trouble children had been and still is fathers that are inactive. One of the characteristics of a weak, passive father is laziness. And I know I don't have any him, but I, there may be some listening at me now. I'm talking about the man who dragged home from work, flopped down in front of a TV to see the game, pop on my slit, and stayed out. And his wife had a job too. She been working too. And she got to cook. Her and get me to eat something to eat done. No, you, you, can't, you, you can't do that. Her legs tied. Come on, y'all. Your leg tied like yo. And you get in there and help her cook. That man is setting a sad example for his children. They may not say something, but they, it'll come to you after a while. If you ever heard me preach, you better, if you know somebody doing that, you better wipe that. I see some young men, you better hear what I'm saying. I'm old enough to tell you that. The world is, the world is law. The work of the church is great. The days are short. The opportunities are big. The Bible tells us to redeem the time because the days are Evil, a good father, a delicate man who scheduled include time for his family. I don't care how busy you are, you gotta have time to talk to the children. That's the trouble in the schoolhouse. Nothing going on worth a quarter at home. Daddy, we got to come in and catch some balls, throw some balls. For John and Raymond and, and, and get some puppies. Look, dog, they want the dog. My, I had two boys, one going to be with the Lord, John. And we got dogs and I didn't like those puppies, but you have to do that for children. Boy, let those boys know you love them. And uh, I wasn't so particular, I'm a rabbit dog man. Be you hound, and somebody know what I'm talking about. I'm from the country. I like, like, like those little fellas that run rabbit. But those boys wanted some meat eaters. And we'd get them, and, and, and they cost a lot of money and have to come to the veterinarian like a baby and all that stuff, have to clip his ears. And, but I did that because it was my job to let them know I wanted them to come up. The only thing... I didn't do what mom and them did. I don't like Santa Claus. I don't like Santa Claus. I quit marrying me. I, am I right, man? I quit. Look, that ain't nothing but a lie. I quit. I buy them some and carry it somewhere until Christmas and give it to them. I ain't going to never put another man before me in my house. No, I'm, I'm, I'm the big God beside God. Raymond cocked me the man in his house. No, sir. And Mary is the boss. <laughs> man, man, I'm, I'm telling the truth. I ain't going to let them talk about a man. Santa Claus, no, uh-uh. Uh-uh, Santa Claus didn't bring that stuff. Mary and Raymond got that stuff and saved it to you for Christmas. I ain't going to get up. I ain't going to, I'm not going to get up Christmas morning. I didn't get up. You know, all the children grown now. I didn't get up Christmas morning. First thing you do is tell a lie. No. No, Santa Claus. Uh-uh. Christmas is about, it ain't about getting things. No. And, and, and we, 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 I said that when I was young. And the folk at church quit speaking to me before I got here. Quit speaking. Tell our children this they, uh -uh, they need to know the truth. Didn't the Bible say John 8 and 36? You shall know the what? Truth. And the truth shall make you free. No, no, no. I didn't play that with my children. They all loved me. But I always got them something. Mary and me went liking for those children. Children need to, talking to children is good, but you got to show some love. Mary wore one dress, don't know how long, sending all them children to school. 
There was six girls and two sons. Every one of them finished college. A, man, a person at this church, a deacon, told me, boy, you'll never send all them children to school. You may send one, but that's too many. You ain't going to send them to college. And I read the Bible. He said one thing. That wasn't you, Claude. He said one thing. But the Bible said I can do all things through Christ. He's me. And every one of them finished college. You can't tell me what I can't do with God. But you got to be a working person. And when you work, son, you got to care what you make home. Have some bird sense. You can't, <laughs> you can't care when you don't make but $40 a week. Help me somebody. <laughs> Some of y'all know I'm telling the truth. You, you can't care none by Miss Blackbird House and care some by Miss Jaybird House. Y'all know I'm talking. Am I preaching? You got to care all of that in one place. It's not what you make all the time, but what you do with what you make. You know you ain't got to afford it all to y'all cow. Come on, somebody. You got to care all that home. And you got to, you, you, hey, college, they, they giving some tuition money back now. But at the time, some uh, loan, they, 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 back. His, his tough to educate one. And I had three daughters up at A&M College in Huntsville, and they stayed there. Because I worked. I worked in the cotton mill. I worked at the ice house. I worked. I, I washed cars. I did everything but some wrong. And uh, it hadn't been for God, I would have done that. Now, what did that? I'm glad you had me. I know how to make whiskey. Because my Uncle Frank made it. And I worked for him. He didn't pay me nothing, but I learned how to make it. You ain't going to find nobody tell you much of the truth. Show. I can run, I, but I didn't do it. My daddy didn't do it. And a bunch of us, God will bless you. If you work, don't go to the job making choice of what you're going to do. Do what you're told to do. Am I preaching right? I just, look, I don't tell you something. I, I, I can't have a lazy person. I said this last week, I, 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 I can't have a lazy person. I, I can't get along with him, Johnny. He's just lazy and be, whew, that, that make me sick. Really, I'm, I'm just Raymond with a message. What? Now, number three, a good father must be a patient man. Like Job, I want to hit that again. Counsel is in the heart of man. It's like deep water. But a man with understanding will draw it out. There is a way that seems is right. But the way of that is the judgment. What look right sometimes ain't right. But I tell you what's right. Work. Take care of what you make. I have a grand boy. My daughter Elsa's youngest son. And I claimed him to be a millionaire because he finished school and he's in Atlanta and uh, he's quiet and he's slow. He's old enough to marry, but uh, he won't wait till it's time to marry. Now, I, I want you to marry. I don't want you to shake. But I won't wait till the Lord give you somebody to marry. Every Jezebel in the street ain't good for you to marry. But if God give you a woman, you ain't going to make no mistake. I married Mary almost 70 years ago. But you know how I got married? I prayed for her. Y'all need to hear me. That's been almost 70 years ago. I prayed, I said, give me a girl. I wanted a pretty girl now. I thought. <laughs> I want, I want, but give me a, somebody that don't mind. Mary don't mind working. She's calm and cool and collected. And you have to. Mary got a way to get every dime out of my pocket. 
Now, I, I'm, I'm telling y'all, young fella, and when you get the right real, she'll get everything out of your pocket she want. It won't cuss you now time. Now, come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Where's Roy Chamber? Miss Chamber get everything out of your pocket. Because you love her. That love will do that. You don't have to cut women. You don't have to cuss your husband. I hope you don't have to cuss. You don't talk ugly to your wife. Uh, if, if Mary know I need, know, know I have, and I tell you what, don't let her tell you she don't go in your pocket. She go in your pocket, buddy. And if you have a thousand dollars in your pocket, and three or four hundred be gone a day and get back. She gonna ask you about that. That let you know she went in your pot. And you know what? Ain't no need you trying to hide it. She's not gonna let you see her do it. But she gonna do it. She gonna check your bank account. That's good. I'm, see, I'm telling you something. No, my wife's scared. Now, back in mama's day, mama wouldn't go in that when mama... When dad had passed away in Cobb Hospital, my sister Johnny Mae was there, and my dad had kept a pocket full of money because he never spent all of his money, but mama never went and never looked in it. Johnny Mae took his pocketbook, and she said she handed it to mama, and mama said, this, 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 this John pocketbook. My sister Johnny Mae said she told her, look, mama, I've been with you. She one of the older children. Say so you never went in mama, daddy's pocket. You never bothered him. You took what he gave you. But said, Dad is gone now. And all that money in his pocketbook is yours. <laughs> but she go in your pocketbook. But love or let her go anywhere you want to go. Ain't nobody saying nothing. But I'm I'm I'm, I'm telling you something. Counsel is in the heart of Amber like deep or a good father is a good listener. For our purpose today, we can paraphrase verse 5 to saying, The thought in a child's heart is like deep water, but an understanding father draws them out. Got to be understanding enough to look at people who the children uh, would play with. Mary and I didn't let our children go play with anybody. No, and some of the things Mama brought up from us. I put that on my children because a lot of them in family. If they went anywhere, I dog them, dare them to eat. Mama said, don't you eat. Mama told us not to eat. No, don't offer you nothing because folk would think you don't have nothing to eat at home. And they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't, they stay a while. But we wouldn't let them stay all day. I'd be working. But Mary knew to call them home when they play about 30 minutes to an hour. Don't let them go. Don't, don't. Parents will not let their children stay at a place all day long. It's something they can do at home. I hope I'm helping some. I may not be helping you, but you tell some people, this going on right now. Children in the street after night? No. When the sun go down, I don't know how, <clears throat> how in the world mama could call that loud. And daddy never called that loud, but mama, mama, mama could have, hey, Rayma. <laughs> Didn't have no telephone out there. But I could hear mama call. That means you better get to that house for sundown. Because she had something waiting for you if you didn't. She, had, she put something on you that Ajax couldn't wash off. And that's Spare the rod. Run it, the child. I've heard Daddy say many times when we had, we had done something, he told us to quit running the mule. We whooped the mule and make him run fast, and, and Dad didn't want to do that. He saw us doing it. He, my brother Roosevelt and I, he said, y'all boys, come here. He didn't whoop us that day. He waited till his passion went down. He said, both y'all boys, come here without the barn. Said, y'all know y'all running that running the mule with the wagon yesterday. Yes, sir. well I know what we. we I, I, I thought they said no, but you're gonna get two whooping and he's catching a lie. 
Somebody ought to do the folk in charge. I heard more lies told in public this year than I ever heard. Somebody need to tell folk God hates a liar. It's in Proverbs. Did y'all know that? A person ought to tell the truth. Now, John Cockman and Lucia will whoop you about lying. If t we told the teacher a lie, it, go home, mama whooped and go carry back to school. You need to tell the truth. Tell the truth. He said, now I saw y'all running to me yesterday and I'm going to whoop y'all because I love you. You got to learn to oh, be obedient. He, he, differently, he talked to you first, but he had him a switch. Do you think he's going to let you off? No, he ain't going to let you off. He's going to whip you. But he tell you why he whipped you. He, he wouldn't be out of his head. But he gave you something. You see, I still remember it, don't I? I tell you what we didn't do. We didn't run those mules no more. It helped when people talk. You got to be cool and kind. A good problem up here. Patient, a good listener. And to know. And the last one, I'm through. No, I got to get a, a faithful friend. That's not the last. Be a friend. A house by the side of the road. And be a friend to man. A stuck up person never gets in the way, in my, the way I see it. You got to be friendly to people. Even when they are not friendly to you. Because somebody's child is watching you. Smile. Sometimes when I go to the grocery store, go to the Walmart, everybody there look like no me. I speak to so many folk. If I don't write down what I went in for, I forget what I, I just want to be nice to everybody. Somebody's children, not my children, but somebody's children is watching you. You didn't know that, did you? Somebody's children is listening at you. And you have to be careful. Uh, or, and, and let me move to the next one. Time out. Yeah, the time is running out. Number five, I promise you five point. A righteous soul. That's Proverbs 20 and 7. The just man walk in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. I just told you that your way of action, the way you act, your integrity, not only bless you, but it bless your children and other children. When you are intelligent enough to not to lash out when somebody do you wrong. I got to tell you one why I, I was done wrong. Uh, out in the garden, Miss Rodell, picking all in God. Let me tell you something. God have blessed that garden so, and I couldn't get made out in that garden until <laughs> it's time together. Now she'll go help me get. Thank you, Mary. You know I won't tell everything like that, but you know those squash and those. Uh, a tomato have fur on them, brother idea. And I'm out there picking in short sleeve, and I should have had gloves on. And I get full of pers perspiration. I wipe my face, wipe my arm, and I broke out. A rash came on me. I went to my doctor, and I have a good doctor. And folks think I, like I talk, I talk to my doctor, just like I talked to you, when he give me some, I don't take, I'm going to carry it back and take. So you got to be plain. You know what? He loved me. Come on in here, Raymond. How you doing? I thought I got some rash on me. And I told him what I got. I said, I need some stuff. So he sent to a certain store, and they didn't have it. Maybe know I'm telling the truth. They didn't have it. But first thing they said, that's some new folk there. And don't, let me tell you, that's still some bad treatment on you now. I didn't know if they treated me wrong. Said, but you got to pay for it now. I said, ma'am, I pay for something when I get it. I wouldn't pay for it. And you know they wouldn't get it? I went back that, uh, that was Monday until Wednesday. 
They didn't own it for me. Prejudice. Prejudice is still alive. I didn't say nothing. But we live in a, a world of book, uh, a paper, a world of bill. When one won't, or nothing will. Know what I did? I called my son Raymond and his wife, you know. And they said, what the name of it? I said, I don't know, but I need it. <laughs> Whatever it is. He said, we get it. She went, and the next day, they got it. Look, you don't have to show yourself when folk wrong. Now, what they going, what that store is doing, I got off with them. They thought I was going to holler. There's a sign in Selma University, speak little and do much. If I go in your store and you don't want me to have, it ain't no more protesting with Raymond. I was in Selma, that was protesting time. You know I'm a man like anybody else. I'm not going to, I'm going to leave your store and go in somewhere else. Somebody say amen. You don't, look, I'm not going to show my, and, and, and they didn't know I was a preacher out there. No, how? Because when I started out the store, 10 or 12 people, oh, that Reverend Cochran. And the lady said, you a preacher? You know what I did? Turned around and didn't say nothing. You ought not to treat me good because I'm a preacher. You ought to treat me right because I'm a person. And I was itching. The doctor had called the prescription there and they wouldn't give it to I'm letting y'all know segregation is still alive and doing well, but don't worry about it. God will bring things back. You don't need to fight. Come on, y'all. You don't need to fight on nothing. Trust God. I don't need, I don't go around telling folk, this is Reverend Cochran. I'm, I don't, you don't have to tell folk that. They're going to discover who you are at your way of action and let them know you know Jesus. If you mention Jesus' name anywhere, I'll own him anywhere. Because I've been born again. If you be born again, you can brow, Holy Spirit will brow your tongue down. I told you, let me repeat it. I'll never forget that sign in Selma University. Speak, little. And do much. That's why really I, I don't want nobody. I don't need nobody to say, well, Dr. Cochran and all this. I don't want to do that. Just call me pastor if you want. Just call me Raymond. My name is Raymond. I'm a person. I don't want nothing. Whatever God had blessed me with, I don't want to get lifted on. Stay right down to the ground. I do my own lawn, getting tired, but I do it. And I had to go to the store, John, to get some oil. Well, now you know you don't do lawn in a suit. Come on, somebody. You put your overalls on, do that, don't you? In Greece, I went there to get some oil. And somebody was at the store and said, Reverend Cockrum, you don't look like a preacher. Woo wee. Right up there in Fletcher running that store. I tell the truth. You know what I did? Don't run and preach to my sermon in my overhaul. You can't work outdoors in a suit. You got, I, I work like Brown and the rest of them. And, and, and that's what keep me going. I want to be Raymond. Well, you ought to get somebody. You, you can get somebody. I know I can get somebody to do my lawn. Why can't I do it myself? Because I was real to work. Man was set up from sin to work and to keep moving. As long as I'm able, I'm going to move. You may wonder why I haven't retired. What am I going to retire for? I sure ain't going home and sit around. And I love my family, I'm married. But I'm not going to go home and sit with her all day. I ain't never been no set home at home all day. I'm going somewhere. So I just keep her working. 
from one place to the other, outdoors, in the yard, in the garden. And God bless you when you do, and your children. And I thank God for my children. There are one or two of them there. And I just thank God that they are so nice to us. They don't allow us to want for nothing. I thank him that we have lived to see them get grown and they bloom and that they can't stay at home with you. But I got over that. I know they can't stay at home. Nothing do. They can't, all of them can't stay in Columbus, Phoenix City, some. they scattered around everywhere. But that's what we want them to do. We want them to have an education and to go out and to make the, the society better. The door of the church is now open. There may be somebody who want to come to church. My time is out. Over time. But I tried to bring the message that you could take home with you. God's church is always open. It was open when Jesus died on Calvary. Would that be a person who would like to be a member of this congregation? Uh oh. Do it all. I have no that time of year that we recognize the father of the year. But first of all, we need to recognize the father of the church, and that's Pastor Cochran. All right. And a man that sent eight children to college <laughs> have to be a good father. <laughs> Pastor Cochran, would you come? All right. On behalf of the Franchise Missionary Baptist Church, we'd like to present you with a toast of uh, appreciation for your years of service and for your dedication to franchise. Thank you. Thank all of you. Thank you, sir. And I have a seat for you if you want to sit down. Yeah, I sure want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, our father of the year, he's an awesome person. He loves his wife, and I see him walk in every Sunday, all right. in hands. He served in the Army for 16 and a half years. What you say? He loved to barbecue, and I do too. <laughs> he helped his wife cook, and he's become quite a chef. Uh -huh. uh, he will help anyone that needs help a loving father and a loving grandfather to a whole lot of grandchildren <laughs> and great-grandchildren. His heart is big and good. Bottom line, he's a good man. And he sang in the choir. 
All and right. He's saying he's just that kind of God. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Our father of the year for 2021, uh, Mr. Charles Buster Watson. Would you? All right, up? Watson. All right. All right. Uh, bring your wife with you. Bring your wife with you. <laughs> Amen. Come on, come on, baby. Yeah, give my water. Isn't that? Get your cane, baby. We all headed that same way, baby. We can wait on you. Take your time. Amen. Sit up. Ah, down. Ah. All right. And we have a certificate here that reads. Father of the Year presented to Charles Watson, Franchise Missionary Baptist Church, Phoenix City, Alabama, Dr. Raymond Cock, the pastor, June the 20th, 2021. Mm -hmm. And we have a little token of appreciation for All Father right. of the Year. Look at that. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> he going to give it to him. I told him. <laughs> Would you have a word? I want to thank God first for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank the pastor and thank the committee that selected me. And tell all you people here that I love you. Yeah. I love you. Thank mm. you. All right. All right, give my hand. Well, I thank God. Thank you, Brother Johnny. Thank each of you. We're getting ready to go. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for, we just recognizing, man, hey, you're somebody. God is looking for us. And Charles Watson, his wife, is a, say, look how good they look. Now, the next thing, when you get old, I told Deacon Joe Clark, stand up, Joe Clark. Stand up. You don't have to think. Now, me and Joe, Joe Clark and I, is oh, but you don't have to. Now, he got on a good suit. I told him I like to have Brother Isaiah. I, now, he looked as good as you do. He, he young. He, he ain't quite young as you, but I, I want to come in him. First thing old folk do when they get old is have his clothes off. You 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 do that. Put your clothes on. That look don't it look nice. Don't it give him a hand for dress. Nice, both of Thank God for you. And that's that's young men, young women, that's what we are looking. The reason we do that, we want you to know church ethics. Church ethics. And you know I was taught that. You don't just come in the pulpit any kind of way. I want to tell you, I mentioned Deacon Hughley. He's a businessman, and most of you know that. You never see him shabby dress. And I, every time I see it, you represent me. I see you on television, represent the trash, but I don't see you with your collar laid over. You, you represent Raymond Cochran. And every other person, the young people watch you. And you, you, you need to look like a gentleman. I hate to see a preacher get in the pulpit out there like you out playing God. No, no, you put your robe on and put a tie on. 
This is a, this, this, that's church ethics. I was taught that. You don't never, look, you don't never see me undressed. I don't care what you see on TV. The church is a special place. And you ought to look like, now, I'm, I'm saying this, don't y'all fool with no young preacher. If he can't put his clothes on, if he ain't got no robe, put a tie, and dress nice. That's what I've done for the last, well, almost 70 years. When I didn't have a one suit, Mary would help me iron that suit. And I, I go to those people and look like what you are. And that's what you've done. God bless you. God keep you. Now, I tell you what we've got to do, and we're going to rest. As you put those sick people up there, uh, now I want to make an expression. The young lady that read last week didn't have her glasses, and she mispronounced some words. Now I want to intercede for that. You understand that. But I want those names read, and because these are the people who want to be here. Okay, and the Spirit led me that we ought to pray. We're going to close with the prayer every Sunday when you read. Come on, uh, Miss Hugo. I hate to worry. Come on. We want to involve everybody. You do well. You can see them well. God bless you. Now, I can't see her. I can't see those names well enough to read them up there. Come on. Thank you, um, Brother Pastor. Our sick and shut in, Vera Allen is at Magnolia Manor, Gloria Carter, Riverside Center, Pearl Davis, Muskogee Manor, Nathaniel Gordon, Canterbury Nursing Home, Annie Bell Moore, Dadeville Nursing Home, Margaret Smith, Greater Columbus Personal Care, Daisy Tate, Parkwood Nursing Home, Sarah Warren, Magnolia Manor, Lucinda Wiggins, Orchard View, Phyllis Allen, Jeanette Amadeo, Jesse Battle, Adele Brantley, W.T. Brown, Joe Benison, Mary Nell Carter, Lizzie Clark, Elsie Collins, Helen Collins, Ruthie Cunningham, Ernest Harris, Carolyn Hughes, Maddie Jackson, Caria Kendall, Betty King, James Phillips II, Christine Plez, Curtis Robinson, Beverly Samuel, Willie Smith, Norbert Sullivan, Mary Terry, Bertha Turner, Michael Walton. Uh, of course, Mr. Watson and Ms. Watson are here with us today and we're so glad that he's being honored. And our last uh, person is Larry Wynn. <laughs> Let us stand and we pray for those people as we dismiss our worship. God, we thank you for this day of worship and the people named in which we're called. Lord, we pray that you bless them. We know you are omnipresent. You can go to each home, wherever they are. And God, we know that you can bind up their sad heart they came to church while they were able, but they can't come with their heart is here. And God, we pray that you touch Lord Jesus with your hand of mercy, that they can be continue to be blessed and that they'll soon be back to church and back to normal life. And God, while we're praying, we're praying for everybody wherever they are. Mankind everywhere is your blessing. Those who are in prison, those who may be bereaved, wherever they might be, God, you're a God that loved all of us and you gave your son and the son gave his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you, Lord. We leave this place with thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And now may the grace of God and the fellowship of his spirit may rest with us. Now and forevermore we pray. 
Amen. God bless you. And come again next Sunday. Wednesday we 